What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today we are chilling at the Chud Shop with some of the best sausage makers the world has to offer. Hello. Mr. Cole Parkman from the Roy and Lewis and Mr. Tyler Hodge, all the way from Connecticut. The sausage king of Connecticut, some may say. Um. From the okay. ground. We're gonna make three different sausages and we're gonna just do it kind of casually and as fast as possible and then we're gonna eat them and they're gonna be good, so. You know what they say, it is going to be delicious. Mr. Parkman. Yes, sir. What are you making for us today? I'm gonna make my version of old school, Central Texas style Lockhart and Luling links. So what that consists of basically is beef and a little bit of pork and a lot of fat and salt and pepper. And that's it. Cool, starting out with my favorite thing to make sausage with. The point side of a brisket. It's nice and fatty. It's usually right around five pounds to begin with. Have you ever made a sausage that's too fatty? Mmm, no, I don't think so. What about you? I don't think so. We'll have to test that out one of these episodes. Are you uh, weighing lean and giving a perfect ratio? I'm trying to, yeah. This is one of the sausages I really like to do that with. Some of them don't matter. You use a pork butt, but as close to the real ratio as I can. Go for 70-30? About, yeah. A little heavier. Nice. What are you, Mr. Hodge? What do you make for us today? All right, so I'm gonna do my take on a Texas mild sausage, but I'm a big coffee nerd, so I like to add a little bit of coffee, add some acidity, balances everything out. Beef and pork? Yeah, I mean, I usually use beef at the restaurant. Beef and pork's nice. Balance, it makes uh, the flavors pop a little bit more, less aggressive. I find I have better luck when I use a beef and pork blend as opposed to just one or the other. Yeah. Just texturally. Yeah, I also like the flavor better if you use a mixture. I think it's a little overpowering if you use one or the other. As for me, I am doing a chicken and pork sausage. So right here I got two pounds of some nice fatty pork belly, to which I'm gonna add three pounds of some cut up chicken breast. I've done thighs in the past, and they're good, but I kinda like the texture of breast meat. And there we go. I feel like that moment in, in the new Spider-Man movie when there's three Spider-Men all working in the lab together. You feel that way right now. You're over there measuring spices. I'm over here cutting the cheese. Ooh, this guy. Fart jokes. This guy, I don't know what he's doing. So what do you got going into this so far? Uh, figure eight coffee, local in Texas, Austin. Um, the red, then regular spices, onion powder, garlic powder. There's some, a little bit of cumin, mustard seeds, ancho chili powder. Decaf, does it make a difference? Uh, yeah. No, it doesn't. Actually, normally I use caffeinated, but this is from Megan. She only drinks decaf. Shout out Megan. She's the one who wrote the theme song. Chud chat time, chud chat time. Come on, everybody. Join the line. She should have been here. I don't know about y'all. I have found the best way to cut blocks of cheese is with the serrated slicer. Swiss cheese. I got a little high temp Swiss. It's been in my freezer for way too long, so I figured this would be a good time to get rid of that. But I don't have enough, so we're also gonna go with some regular. So hopefully we get a little bit of goo factor and a little bit of studdage. Yeah, both these guys sent me lists of ingredients. Cole's was pepper and beef. Then he showed up with pepper. Tyler sent me a freaking laundry list with things like dried orange peel. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can find that. Sure enough. A little cayenne pepper, a little black pepper and salt of the kosher variety. That's it? Salt, pepper, cayenne? Mm, that's it. Any binders today? Maybe. Are you gonna try the bull binder? Are you gonna stick I am. Here? I'm gonna try, ooh, ooh, God, I got it, it's a 666. It's scary. The devil. Yeah, you know, when, for me, sausage making, it's not about, you know, getting inspired by someone else. I, uh, you know, I really, I gotta blaze my own path. Uh, I'm a lot like, uh, you know what I'm a lot like? I'm a lot like Greta Van Fleet. They don't, they're not like anyone else totally. ever. And you know, they just kind of blaze their own path. And that's me, I'm just blazing my own path out here. So the boys have their spices together. We got old school, not at all inspired by Lockhart sausage right here. We got the Tyler Hodge Coffee House special. And for me, I'm gonna keep it real complex today and bust out some good old fashioned, nice and plump, Chud's Barbecue Starter Mix. On sale now at shopchuds.com. So you're using some bull binder coal. I am using bull binder. I have always heard, and I know that the rumor is that this is what the Kreitz and Smitty's family used. I've never outright asked them, but I know sometimes they will say that they don't, and maybe they don't anymore. Uh, and I've never actually used it. I usually typically use milk powder in it, but I want to try this. I want to see if it affects the flavor. I, I think even, it might. I don't even know what that is. I, think it's like I know there's oats in it. Yeah. There's wheat, rye, oat, and rice flours, corn. I imagine why they don't use this anymore is because it's not gluten-free. 
free, but then you also run into like, it's not dairy free if you use milk powder. What's your stance on binders and sausage? No binders for me, sorry. You got those big meat mitts, you can just emulsify anything. That's it, hand, hand mixed only. I did, I did hand mixed, no binder for the first like five years of the sausage making journey. And it was like a 90% success rate. Sometimes it'd split, sometimes they'd get crumbly. But ever since using binders, it's just night and day. Every time it's perfect. So it's not necessary to use binders, but uh, if you're lazy or not very talented, then it really does help. I am a small die kind of guy. Oi! Nothing gets between me. You need me to flip around for you, pal? Please, turn her on. Oops. You a uh, small guy guy as well? Yes, sir. Always? Always. He's a buffalo chopper at the restaurant, so very much one off. Well, because the small die is already on, <laughs> might as well. That's a lot of fat, not much meat. Let's see how far I can get my hand down there. I don't know how I started doing that or why I started doing it. I've always done it that way. I saw Eden do like do it differently and I asked him, I was like, what are you doing? He like explained it to me and then I realized Brad did it that way. And I realized a lot of people do it that way. And it makes sense because you lose less spices through the grinder. I mean, for me, for the first like five years, up until I left Leroy and Lewis, I always did what you did. Spices and everything goes into the meat, then through the grinder, because it, you know, incorporates it throughout the meat better. Honestly, once I started doing milk powders and other binders, it was too powdery and it really started gunking up the grinders. And I just, yeah, it was just a lot harder to clean. So that's why I started grinding the meat first. But either way, it seems to work out. Oh, look at that tackiness. Nice protein extraction, but when was the last time you did a five pound batch of sausage? Ironically, last week. <laughs> Before that? Uh, year, year and a half. I usually do 75 pound batches. Yeah, my first job was 40 pound batches twice a week. And by the time I left Friedman's, it was triple that. Yeah, we do 100 pound batches three to four times a week right now. That's crazy. Isn't it? That's nuts. He left a little spice in there. Oops. <laughs> All right, chud mix going in. Give that a quick little how you doing. Beautiful color on that. Going in with liquid, just some water, nothing fancy. All right, starting to get some tackiness going. Now we're going in with our big chunks of ham. A little concerned that these are too big, but... <sighs> I think it'd be kind of funny. As long as it makes its way through this, we'll be all right. And then a whole bunch of Swiss cheese. The smaller ones are the high temp, so those yeah. will stay in there looking studded. And then the big ones will just kind of melt. That's cool. Which will be nice. Theoretically. All right, get this nice and tacked up. And then it's time to start casing. Look at him go. I want a gift of that. Now we have meatloaf. Throw that thing right on the smoker pan and all. What's the size you look for? I try to do about like that. So I try to figure out where that is. Like nine or incher? I've never measured it. Have you ever I just weighed like, it? Yeah, they're around like, they're anywhere from like a quarter to a third. And then like, if I'm being like kind of inconsistent, then they're closer to a half. But I really like somewhere around a third of a pound. Look at him go, making ceilings. I've never actually seen you make a ceiling. Have Almost you, no one has, really. Have you seen my video where I did them? Yeah. How do I do it differently than you? I think yours were more consistent than mine. But essentially, this it looked like you did the same thing. Do you use string to uh, tie them up, or you? No, I would love to, but I. What somebody was asking me that earlier. I don't understand how they do that. <laughs> so instead, I just leave all the slack in between. Just like when I went fishing a lot, I always left a lot of slack, and my grandpa would yell at me. Who do you call that little fella? Think Cole made a coal? We got a little baby coal made by its namesake. That's a beautiful looking link, nice and pink. Hashtag pink link. Wow, nice and plump. Nice and plump. Smells good. Oh, it's a whole totally different system over here. Going the big, big long rope followed by individual twisters. How's the linking coming? It's going. Oh, using a little thingy as a measurer. That's a nice little trick. Old hockey, old hockey stick. Going on with some 28 mil casings today because that's what the boys like. Better. Tie it off. Snip the tip. <laughs> oh, chunky chicken coming at you. The world fell silent and the sausages fell plump. Do you think people would buy these if you call them hammy hammy chick chick links? 
I think they would, yeah. Can I have a pound of the Hima Hima Chick Chick? Please. And just like that, folks, three different sausages all linked up, three different colors, looking absolutely beautiful, I must say. Out back here, we got the Chud Box fired up in grill formation. And up front, we got the Chud Pit 65 fired up. It's rocking pretty hot right now because it's like 105 degrees out. So we're gonna let that cool down a little bit and get some links on the pit. Yeah, that's what we're doing. How good does your pit cook? I don't know, we'll find out. Oh, ho, ho, loading up. How do we know which one is which? All right, we're out here on the back deck, rocking the old mini chud box. So far, I've put all of these guys in direct, just to kind of bring them up to temp. Rocking around 350 degrees. I just took them up till they were feeling nice and plump, and off they come. Took about, I don't know, 15 minutes, really not that long, maybe 10. I'm letting them cool down on the side here, and then I'm gonna grill them off. So we have a grilled sausage to compare with our smoked sausage. How are they feeling, boys? They feel Gucci. good. They look good. Are we temping or are we going by feel? No, I'm going by feel. Even the chicken sausages? Nope, not those. Okay, heard. Heard, chef. Also, if anyone ever orders merchandise from Chud's Barbecue at chudsbarbecue.com and it smells a little bit smoky, it's because of nights like this. We've had the door open, smoke's been blowing in, and you know, a lot of this merch, it comes pre-smoked. So, ah, uh, there's that. Pre-smoked, merchandise. Target, hear me out. I want to pre-smoke all your merchandise. How they feeling? Good. Are they nice and plump? Baby cold. Baby Cole, I love you, Cole. These look phenomenal. They look nice. The color is great. It I couldn't be more horseshoe shaped. I say it's all due to the guy who ran the fire. I gotta say, boys, I don't know what I was expecting when we bring the world's greatest sausage masters together, but that's a pretty good looking pile of wings. So yeah, these, these are all the coldy smoked on the offset. These ones were just blasted hot and fast with that little char factor. We're gonna let these rest down for just a wee bit so we don't burn our little mouths here. And then we're gonna dive on in and see how they came out. It's all you, chef. Oh. Ooh. Have you done this before? Got sausage. Beautiful, nice and juicy. I like the mustard seeds in there. I forgot about Love that. It. Yeah. That was really good. Wow, it's got like a like a sweetness to it, but it's not overpowering. So good. Ooh, the coffee. It kind of accentuates the black pepper a little bit. So my that's my whole process with the whole coffee piece. It like makes it look like black pepper, but it's literally just the coffee. It also looks like an everything bagel. Which mm -hmm. I love. That's a cool play. I love it. Everybody asks like how to cut these. I think the easiest way to cut these is like this, and then. Whoa, fancy. That looks nice and juicy. Good smoke ring going. You can smell that cracked pepper. Yeah, for me, I usually just go right across this way so you get double coins. I like that. But that's, I don't know, that's nice. It's like a kind of onion. What are you most excited to try? Well, I've had the old school sausage a million times, so the other two. <laughs> go for the chicken. Go for that nice bias cut. Looking cheesy. Ooh, Ooh nice. Looks nice. Plump. I gotta it's cut one of these. Good. You can't even see the ham in there, really. Oh, there's a couple chunks, yeah. That looks great. My little signature move. You gotta squish it all together. So it's even more plump. Plump. All right, let's dive into some of this stuff. Well, just because it's the closest to me. Ooh, nice little chunk of cheese. That's really good. Oh, really good. chunk of ham in there. That Swiss is nice. The sauce is good in there. Very clean sausage, you know, not anything too far out of left field. The old school, yeah. this is my latest obsession because you've been working on it for like months and I keep trying it. Thank you. The, the bullflower does change the taste. It, does, it changes the taste. I was gonna say the bind on this, the juiciness of it. The bind's crazy. It's so creamy. That's what I've been looking for. Whoa. That's much different than the breadcrumbs I used. It's very different. It's, it's super different than the milk powder, which I always use. Mm -hmm. You think it's better, worse? Different. I like it more, maybe. What do you think? You're the one that eats it the most. I think I like it more. I think I like it more, too. It's not that it's like super creamy. The fat just feels right. I haven't had Swiss in a sausage in a long time. It's that mild, but it complements the smoke very nicely. It does. Where's the, where's the little TH sausage? There it is. That's really good. This is just so complex, you know, like the amount of different flavors going on. Yeah, it is. Especially in comparison to ours. Like yours is just salt, pepper, cayenne. Mine is not far from it. Just a little more garlic and paprika and whatnot. Yeah, the grilled links. I'm excited. It's amazing how much different flavor you can get just from the preparation. Really oh, Ooh, that's juicy. That's great. The char flavor is so good. Oh yeah. Like, that's good, but that's 
like equal. That's so much better. It's better. Mm. I mean, you're just adding that like ah. Maillard. Yeah. It, it gets smoke from the coals and the wood that was in there. That was so good. Especially because it's kind of a mild, you know, ham, cheese, chicken sausage. Yeah. yeah that adding that, that, that Maillard. No, you're right. Ooh, 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 ooh. The grilled sea link. I was so old tool like that. It's funny without the cure, it's just gray. <laughs> you know, it's usually got a yeah, nice it's so funny. pink hue to it. The pepper's, the pepper's more pungent on this. It is. On the grilled versus smoked? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can tell just by looking at it. Like, you're going to get some extra flavor. That thing is char dog status. Still juicy, can I add yeah. Dolby, though? Turns out the giant ham chunks were not too big. No, they're perfect. That's cool. Do you ever char sausages at the restaurant or no. are you smoking them? Smoked hot hold. That would be interesting to see how something like this, because these are already like leaking, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can see they all, they all split. I'm sure they don't hold great. Yeah, Dave was, Bonner Green say. Street does it. He chars them at the restaurant. Really? Yeah. That would be the way to do it. Char to order. I kind of like prefer it charred. I think I prefer chard on every sausage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They don't look as pretty, but that extra layer of flavor, really all you need. You should bring the sauce out. Ooh. I'm like, how you doing? Yeah. I was just going for like a mild sausage, like something with like a lot of flavor, not super hot, because people complain that jalapenos are too hot in mm. Connecticut. So mm. it's like just doing like the whole mustard seed, like you get the out here. The best sauce in, not in Texas, it's in all of barbecue. That's the best sauce. I mean, that's one of the ultimate bites is a Christ sausage and a looming sauce, right? Yeah, oh. that's a good bite. Thank you. It's so good. A little sweetness, a little tang. It's so good. Mm. Both of them are good, but the grilled. This is great. Will you slice up this extra charry one? Here, that, that one's got my eye on it. Oh, it's that sound. Oh my God. It's like crispy bark. Thank you. Know. Beautiful. No, it's like nostalgic in a way. Yes. Kids, you want to give us a snap test? <laughs> oh. Should. Very nice. <laughs> nice and plump. Yeah, we're also watching Shark Week while we eat sausages, which just feels appropriate. Mm. Of course. I think the winner is grilled, grilling them. Yeah. yeah. Grow your sausages. Now, do you think that's because all of us have spent our careers smoking sausages and having something slightly different is novel? Or do you think it's genuinely because it's that much better? I think it's part of both. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. This is a this is a great sausage. Yeah. But that is nostalgic and it eats so well. It's so good. Yoink. The sauce really cuts through perfectly for all of these too. Yeah, that is nice. It's a great sauce. It's the best. Luling City, City Market. Market. Chunky studdage. Look oh. how well bound it is to the ham too, it's crazy. That's so good. What'd you put in there, chicken? A little bit. Favorite sausage, go. No, I can't. I really can't. It's Coles. <laughs> <laughs> it's cause he's holding <laughs> Favorite sausage. The grilled, I think it's a tie. I think it's a tie between your grilled ham and cheese and then the grilled coffee. The coffee is so good. That's so it's complex, so it's so nice. I think. Both of those tie. I've had mine before. Those are great. Grilled sea rings. Sea rings are something that like I don't get to ever get. So like me making wonky sausages, making cordon blues before. It's a very good cordon blue sausage. Obviously I've made mine once or twice. Sea rings grilled, mind blowing. It's simple, but yet so like stand out as it sits. It's crazy. Yeah, I gotta agree. I'm definitely on team sea ring, sea link, sea horseshoe right now because it's something new. But I think that's kind of what we've been talking about this whole time is we've all been making sausages for, you know, the better part of five, 10 years and just to have something different, whether it's form factor in C-Link or on the grill as opposed to just cold smoked. I don't know, they're all so good. And that's the beauty of sausage making, folks. You can make them all. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to make three amazing sausages from three amazing sausage makers. I gotta say, I really love cooking with other pit masters. It's really cool to see different techniques and how people go about going making their sausages. Even though we each case these up differently, had three different flavor profiles and a few different cooking methods, it just goes to show that there is so many different ways to make some amazing sausages. So again, big shout out to Cole Parkman from Leroy and Lewis and Tyler Hodge from Hoodoo Brown. If you guys don't follow them on Instagram, I highly recommend it. And if you want to get their recipes, I think you're going to just have to DM them because I don't feel comfortable sharing their recipes. Also, they didn't tell me what they did. So sometimes having your own secret recipe is a good thing. But all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let each of you know by dropping a like on this video. I'll have my recipe for the chicken cordon blue sausage in the description box down below. And if you do give it a try, be sure to tag me on Instagram. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!